Unsung Heroes, copyright 2013, by Victor D. Lopez. Although I stand on the shoulder of giants, I fail to see much farther than the bridge of my nose. The fault is mine, the shame is mine, for I am unworthy of you, my beloved dead. Emilio, maternal grandfather. Your crime was literacy and the possession of a social conscience that made you yearn to see your beloved Spain remain free and prevented you from suffering fascists lightly. You did not bear arms, for you abhorred all violence. You did not incite rebellion, though you rebelled against the foreign and domestic enemies of freedom. As best I can tell, you are an idealist who in a time of darkness clung passionately to the belief in the perfectibility of the human spirit. You would not abide the lies that the regional newspapers carried and translated news from American and British newspapers about the gathering storm, sharing the truth freely with all who would listen. You gave speeches, and you wrote speeches delivered by others in support of a doomed republic, collapsing under the weight of its own incompetence and corruption. You were warned by friends of your imminent arrest and offered passage back to the U.S. or to Buenos Aires, where so many of your friends had already found refuge. But they could not get your wife and nine children out and you refuse to leave them to their fate. They came for you, as always, in the middle of the night. These cowards with stern faces hiding behind machine guns. They took you prisoner, not for the first time, to the Castillo de San Anton, a fortress by a most beautiful tranquil bay, where they tore out your nails one by one, and that their gentlest caress while they asked you for names. You endured God knows what else there for months and were sentenced to be shot as a traitor at uh, La Plaza de Maria Pita. But the Republic had friends even among the officers of the fascist forces and one of them opened your cell door on the eve of your execution. You had contracted tuberculosis by then Yet, according to Grandmother, you managed to swim miles across the bay in a moonless night to safety in the home of another patriot who risked his life and the lives of his family to hide you in his cellar and made a trip of many miles on foot to find your wife. He found your home and told your wife of your unexpected reprieve, and asked her to send some clothing and some shoes to replace your dirty rags. Your eldest daughter, Maria, insisted in accompanying the stranger back on foot, taking clothing and what provisions she could quickly gather in the middle of the night to carry to you. From time to time, you accepted the hospitality of an overnight stay in the attic or hayloft of a Republican sympathizer, as these were not hard to find in the fiercely independent Galicia under the yoke of one of its own. But mostly, you lived in the woods with active guerrillas for years. You lived with all the comforts of a hunted animal, with others who could not yield, whose greatest crime consisted of being on the wrong side of a lost cause. I hope it brought you some comfort to know that you are on the right side of history. It brought none to your wife and none to your youngest children. As you paid your long penance for your conscience, once a month or so, after some time passed, you visited your wife and children. You were introduced to the little ones as an uncle from far away. They did not know the bearded wild man who paid these visits in the middle of the night and left wearing dad's old, clean clothes long before the dawn. The older ones, Maria, Josefa, Juan, and Toñita, all in their teens, told the little ones that their uncle brought news of their dad. The younger children, still wearing the frayed cloaks of their innocent, accepted this 
not questioning why he stayed in mom's room all night and was always gone long before they awoke. Your grief at playing a stranger in your own home, of not embracing your children on whom you doted, one and all, for their protection and yours, as there were no shortage of fascists who tried to ply them with pastries and candy at a time of hunger, seeking to use their innocence as a weapon against you. Your parents were relatively wealthy business owners who farmed the seas, but disowned you, perhaps for your politics, perhaps for choosing to emigrate and refusing to join the family business, or perhaps for marrying, for love, in New York City, a hard-working girl beneath your social station in their eyes. You lived just long enough to see Spain delivered from war, though not freed of its chains. You were spared the war's aftermath. Your wife and children were not. No books record your name. Most of those who knew you are dead. Yet flowers have long perpetually appeared in your simple above-ground burial site in Sada that holds your ashes, and those of your eldest son, Juan, and your second eldest daughter, Donita, who died much younger than even you. Your wife has joined you there, in a place where honor, goodness, decency, principle, and a pure, broken heart now rest in peace. Part 2. Sonnets. Ode to Innocence. O half-remembered fleeting happy time, when nothing mattered more than love and play, imagination was then in its prime, and life began anew with every day. A flower was then a joy, a mystery, and not a petal, root, and simple stem and life was full of wondrous fantasy, untainted by the intellect of man. That time is gone now. It cannot return. The fruit's been swallowed, its slow poison kills, and yet my fallen heart will always yearn for that ephemeral time of unknown skill. O oh, false god knowledge, daily you destroy all that was holy in me as a boy. Death of a Quiet Soldier Behind enemy lines you gave your life, the risks you knew and embraced willingly, red, black, and green berets fought by your side and brought your body back to family. Later in a ritual all their own that consecrate a field airport in your name, and honor you, your brothers, far from home, their memory now your eternal flame. I do not know your rank, your name, your face. I only know that I am in your debt. Who for your family can take your place? Our debt to them we must never forget. The freedom I enjoy comes thanks to you and all who serve with honor. Proud and true. Siren Song Poetry is a dangerous siren's song that calls the soul towards a chasm deep, dulling the mind and making the heart long for that which it may touch yet never keep. A sonnet is too much the friend of truth and leaves no room for self-deluding lies. It conjures up the honesty of youth and artifice through artifice soon dies. Essential truths will spill onto the page, transpiring through the pores of consciousness, leaving exposed the battles that we wage to build facades of hope for hopelessness. I can deny the painful song I hear, but it's too late. Its message is too clear. Thank you for listening to this excerpt from Of Pain and Ecstasy Collected Poems. This audio excerpt, as well as the book 
of Pain and Ecstasy Collected Poems are copyrighted by Victor D. Lopez uh, and all rights are reserved. Again, thank you for listening.